I'm James with Silverback Safety Services. And I'm Chris with Silverback Safety Services. Hope you enjoy this training video. So the first knot I want to cover today is, is a foundation knot. The overhand knot or the safety knot, it's also called a stopper knot uh, in some other terminology as well. So the overhand knot, that's what's starting the foundation. There's hundreds of different knots that we could teach you. We want to start with a core of about eight or nine knots. If you learn those core knots, then you should be able to do anywhere from 80 to 90% of any rescue. And that's what we're going to cover today. So knot, the first knot, the foundation knot, is the overhand knot. The basic overhand knot is your safety knot or your backup knot. So you take the tail end or working end, you go around the standing part and back through your overhand safety knot. All right, now we're gonna go into the family of eights. We're gonna do a simple figure eight to start with. We'll take the working end, the standing end, and get about a arm's length of rope. Take the working end and go all the way around the standing end, and then go back up through the loop. And that is a simple figure eight. So our next knot we're gonna cover is called a figure eight on a bite. We just learned a simple figure eight, so we're gonna build upon that figure eight family. Figure eight on a bite. This is gonna create an eye or a loop in the end of the rope. So you take about an arm's length worth of rope, lay the tail down next to the standing part. This is gonna be your bite right here, okay? So now you're gonna take your bite and you're gonna do the same motion you did for the simple figure eight. You're gonna take it, wind it back around the back edge, all the way around and back through the top. That's a figure eight on a bite. Now we're not done yet. Every knot that we tie is gonna have to have a safety knot, okay? So after you tie your main knot, which in this case is a figure eight on a bite, you're gonna take your remaining tail. It's good to have about six to eight inches of tail because you wanna tie that safety knot, which is your simple overhand. So you'll take the tail, you'll tie simple overhand on the standing part. So there you go, figure eight on a bite with an overhand safety. So another knot in the family of eight we're gonna to learn today is gonna to be the figure eight follow through. Uh, this is an anchor knot when you want to go around an object and make it stationary. So you wanna take the rope and give, you a, give yourself a generous amount. Start by doing just a simple figure eight Go around, back through. Remember to leave yourself enough tail to be able to go around the object that you're going around, whether it be a round pipe or an I-beam. Simple figure eight. And for our purposes today, we're gonna to go around this basket, so you'll go around it. And then we will trace back through this simple figure eight. So where the rope comes out, you'll go in. Working with the end, you'll follow it around. And you will end up with the running end coming out on the standing end. At this point, you can see the eight around the object. You'll dress it down so it'll be easy to untie. Make sure it is all laying flat. And then put your overhand safety, go around, back through, simple overhand. And that is your figure eight follow through. All right, so now that we know the family of eights, we're gonna go into the next knot, which is a bowling. 
And then once again, is to make a eye in the end of the rope. So you'll take about an arm's length of rope and working with the working end of the rope, you'll fold it over onto the standing end, make a loop. Take the running end, come from the bottom, go through the loop, around the standing end, and back in the loop the same way you come out. You'll hold the standing end and the loop and dress it down. And at this time, it's ready to be safetyed off. So you'll do a simple overhand safety. And it will look something like this. All right, so the next knot we're gonna go over is a rolling bowling. Uh, it's used to be able to go around an object, whether it be your basket or a anchor knot for like uh, around a piece of pipe or an I-beam. So you'll take the running end and you'll go around your object like so. Give yourself plenty of room. Take your running end and go over the top of your standing end. And come back through the center part. And as you pull on your running end, you'll give your standing end a little push and it'll form an eye in your rope. So as the running end comes out of the eye, go around the rope. And then go back in the same way you come, the same way the rope come out, you go back in the eye. It'll look something like this. And at this point, you can dress it down. That way, when it sees the load, it'll be easier to untie. And then you'll take this running in and do your simple overhand safety. Go around the rope, then back through the eye, and the end product will look something like so. The next knot we'll go to is the butterfly. It is used to make a loop in the middle of a rope and it is designed to be able to pull in three directions. So if you'll take the rope in the palm of your hand and take the end towards your thumb and wrap from your pinky to your thumb crossing the first rope and one more time from your pinky to your thumb crossing the rope. Then you'll take the first cross rope and feed it under from your palm to the end of your fingers. And if you'll hold on to that, will be your eye and your rope as you dress it down and pull it tight, you'll make a loop. So at this point you can see it's made to pull to the right or to the left and also from the eye in the third direction. So the next knot we're going to do is called the clove hitch. Specifically, I'm going to show a, what we call a split locking clove. Split locking clove. We use this a lot on the basket for uh, when we're securing the patient into the basket, uh, as well as other tie-ons to the basket that we'll get to later on in another video. So the split locking clove. It is a directional knot, uh, so you need to know which direction to pull is going to go. So for our circumstances for this training portion, for this knot, we're going to say that the direction of pull is going to be back this way towards the feet of the basket. Okay. So you're going to take the working end, you're going to lay it across the top. We're going to split this vertical pin right here on this basket. So you got the horizontal rail going on the basket. And this side's going to be what I've referred to as the head side, the head of the basket of the vertical pin. And this side's going to be the foot of the basket, the foot side of this vertical pin. So if you hear me use the terminology, that's what I'm talking about. So I take my tail end or working end, I'm going to go over the rail and come underneath on the head side of the vertical pin right here. Okay? And then I'm going to come across the top and I make an X. So you're halfway done with the clove hitch already, okay? So the head side of that vertical pin is done. So now we're ready to move over here to the foot side. So your rope's already running back over here, so you're gonna continue the rope in the same direction that it's going. So you're gonna get the rope, go over the top, 
and under the rail on the foot side of that vertical pin. And then you can see this big hole that it's making right here. That's where you're going to run the tail through. So you just run the tail right there. So that's what it looks like real loose, okay? But on the basket, so you can see how it splits that pin. So on the basket, we'll dress it down and snug it down. So your direction of pull is going to be back this way because the standing part of your rope is biting down on the tail part, okay? If your direction of pull is that way, then it's going to want to split your knot if you're pulling that way on the rope. So the direction of pull is going to come back this way. Again, what do we need? A safety knot. So what I like to do is I grab my tail end and I just come back over the top and tie my overhand safety. Remember on your safeties, you want to snug them down as close as you can to that main knot. And that's a split lock and clove with a safety. All right, so now that we are switching from ropes to webbing, we're going to do a simple overhand, which will turn into a water knot by tracing it with the other end of the webbing to make a loop. So we have one inch tubular webbing. We'll make a loop and take the running end and go back through it. Just make a simple overhand. Remember the webbing is flat, so we'll keep it flat. And we'll take the other end of the webbing and trace it where this tail end comes out. You'll trace it back through. Following it. And the second piece should come out on the opposite side of the first piece. And it'll look something like this with both tails opposite of each other. And then we'll dress it down. That way it make it a little easier to untie once it sees the load. And then we'll safety it off. Just a simple overhand, around, back through the loop, trying to keep it flat, like so. Same thing on this side, go around, back through, Trying to keep it flat, dress it down. And your end product should look something like this. Thank you for watching our video. I hope you find our Rescue Knots video helpful for your near training. You can follow us on Silverback underscore rescue at Instagram or on Facebook at Silverback Safety Services. You can also contact us by email at rescue at silverback-safety.com. Be sure to like and subscribe to the video. Thank you.